Any questions? So by this we are finished with the guided transmission. Any questions about what we discussed? The major ideas was that number one, in all these uh, kind of transmissions, we have a cable connectivity, right? The differences are always going in such a fashion such that better quality means more cost, right? And better quality is achieved by less attenuation and higher bandwidth, right? This is the general idea. Other specifications in the middle, you don't have to memorize them, okay? Just need to know the general that uh, twisted pair is the worst, uh, but it's the cheapest. Coaxial is an intermediate technology. Optical fiber is the best among those guided transmission media, but it is the more expensive side of things, okay? These are the general ideas of this school, okay? And these are the alternatives. Uh, now, there is one extra advantage to uh, optical fiber, which is the fact that it does not get affected by RF interference. So it's not affected by all these signals that we use for our TV, satellite, whatever, right? Again, because we said at that frequency, the behavior is different, okay? The optical behavior is different from the regular RF uh, behavior. Now, in terms of the unguided media, we're going to go quickly here over a quick introduction and then we'll move to the details in another set of slides. Um, so the unguided media is typically wireless. You don't have any wiring, you don't have any connectivity in terms of physical connection between the transmitters and the receivers, okay? Um, and um, the device that allowed you, or the critical device that we mentioned earlier, is the antenna. The one that defines a good amount of the quality of your channel is how you design the antenna. And it is actually the one that imposes limitations on your system. Okay? You cannot have an antenna that can support all bandwidths with very good frequency. It doesn't happen. Because the, the dimension of the antenna defines the bandwidth and the efficiency. Both. Okay? So you are a stack. Whatever you want to achieve a certain bandwidth, you have to adjust the dimensions based on your transmission uh, carrier. And based on that, the antenna is not going to have an infinite bandwidth. It's going to have a certain limited bandwidth, right? Okay. <coughs> now, the, um, there are two types of transmission. Okay. Again, it's not as listed here, like either directional or omnidirectional. There's an in-between spectrum. Okay. So the start is directional, which means that between the transmitter and the receiver, your signal is going in a very specific direction, so it becomes very similar to light in terms of being focused, okay? And in this case, you require a line of sight uh, connection. Examples of technologies that require a line of sight connection, which means that there, there couldn't be obstacles in between the transmitter and the receiver antenna. You cannot go through walls, right? If you have a mountain or trees in between the transmitter and the receiver, the signal will be blocked, right? Examples of this kind of guide of unguided wireless transmission are the microwave links and the satellite links. That's why when you have high amount of clouds, large amount of clouds, your TV becomes, the signal becomes interrupted. Or in the days of uh, sandstorms, right? The satellite TV reception becomes really bad. Why? Because it's almost blocking the line of, line of sight between the satellite and the dish at your roof. Right? And if that happens, the signal will become very bad. And that's why when you install that dish, you need some technician who's going to direct it to a certain angle, certain direction. Because otherwise, it's not going to receive the signal. It's not like regular wireless transmission where directivity doesn't matter that much. Okay? The other option is omnidirectional, which means that the signal is spread around in all directions with the same value. Right? These are the two extremes. The one which is directional, very directional, line of sight, and the other one which is omnidirectional, so you have your transmitter, and your transmitter is sending the signal everywhere, right? It goes everywhere, right? So the signal power is spread everywhere, okay? That's the omnidirectional, but typically you are working in something in between. So for example, these guys, the dipole antennas, you will study them at the end of your um, course uh, of electromagnetics, right? They have a, a radiation pattern that looks like this, okay? Which means that if this is the antenna, um, approximately anywhere around this area you will have good reception, right? So think of this as a cylinder. So this is a cylinder, right? Going around, okay? But if you go very high here, you will not receive something good. Or if you go very low here, you will not receive something good. Even though you are close to the antenna, 
because most of the radiation is going this way around. Okay? So that's not neither the omnidirectional because it's not equal in all directions, and nor it is very focal. It's enough spread around, right? And typically this is the operating mode. Okay? Frequencies of um, wireless, well actually they go even uh, below, yeah, so starting from approximately 30 megahertz to 1 gigahertz, you have the omnidirectional and broadcast radio, so you have the cases of um, things like your um, mobile phone, typically these are around 900 megahertz, right, and things like your um, broadcast radio that you listen uh, to in your um, car or at home, right? And for the cases of uh, guided transmission, right? For satellites, for example, point-to-point uh, -point connection, microwave connection, you can go from 2 gigahertz up to 40 gigahertz. Now, this is not completely, again, a correct separation, because nowadays, those Wi-Fi's, they work at 2.4 and 5 gig, right? And they are not directional. They are actually closer to the omnidirectional case. Okay? So this is not like a clear cut, but this is most of the technologies of the only direction on this frequency, most of the technologies here on this frequency, and there is some kind of an overlap. So the range between uh, 1 gig and approximately up to 10 gig, there is an overlap between the two technologies. Okay? This is just an illustration of the uh, microwave link. Again, in most of those line of sight, we use a dish or a, an antenna with a reflector, right? So those dishes that you see, keep in mind, they are not, the dish is not the one receiving your signal, by the way. You, you see that the dish looks like this, and then you have something coming from here, right? And it's placed here. This is actually what's receiving the signal and sending it down to your receiver, right? This thing in the middle, okay? They call it the NNP. But the dish is acting just as a reflector. So all the signals that are coming here, right, are reflected towards that central point, okay? And then making sure that it collects the signal from a wider range and then focusing it to the receiver, okay? So most of the point-to-point um, -point connectivity uh, takes the reflector uh, type of design for antennas, right? Because it allows you to collect data um, collect the signal, sorry, from a wider angle and focus it on a certain point, okay? This is for the satellite, and this is also for microwave links. You see those high towers with something that looks like this, right? Uh, some, so that's closed even from the front, right? Above very high towers, right? Those are microwave dishes, okay? You can see them like, it's, it's like a, a box or a can above a very high tower, somewhere around Doha, and it's directed to a certain direction. So these are microwave links, okay? The other ones, which are the antennas for your uh, mobile, they look like this typically, okay? They look like a, a sector like this, okay? And typically you have three of them hanging on a tower, right? For the base stations, right? You typically have three of those hanging above a tower. These are the mobile phone uh, antennas. So these are not very directive. They are actually meant to cover a bigger area, while the microwave one, you will find one here, and maybe like 10, 15, uh, 30 kilometers away, there is another one on a repeater, and then a third one, and then until it carries the signal to a particular destination, right? Okay. <coughs> satellite, again, um, there are two types of satellites. I, I might give actually uh, a talk general to most of the students later about satellite technology, but that's not related to the course. Um, so, there are two types, there are geostationary satellites and um, low Earth orbit satellites or non-geostationary. The geostationary ones are rotating with Earth with the same speed of rotation. This means that they are always above the same point in Earth, right? So, as Earth rotates, they rotate exactly with the same speed and angle, okay? The other ones are actually circling around the Earth. So sometimes they are above Qatar, sometimes they are above the U.S., and so on. And they keep on repeating the circles, right? Those, those two types, the low Earth orbit and the geostationary, have different applications. Typically for communication, in the old technologies, they use geostationary, 
because they wanted to be fixed and covered in the same area all the time. Now they use constellations. So they use those rotating guys, but they use a large number of them. So it becomes similar to the cellular concept, right? Every time Doha is covered by two or three satellites which are moving and some other two or three satellites are coming, right? So this constellation will make sure that you can cover Earth as well, okay? Uh, so that's the summary of how the technology is used, but in terms of details um, of the um, 